Welcome everyone to our course Digital Design is Very Love. In today's class we are going to continue our discussion on combinational logic design. Specifically we will try to de design an adder subtractor block today. So, this part of the uh, this part of the lecture is prepared from Mano's book chapter 4. So, if you recollect in our previous lecture we talked about uh, this full adder development where we have seen that we can first we develop a efficient version of one bit full adder where we assume that there are one uh, there are single bit a and b is coming right a i and b i and there is a carry in and you compute the sum i and carry i plus 1. So, this is one bit full adder and then I can connect them in chain as many as number I need right. So, I can create a any bit full adder right. So, I will get here. So, there will be carry 0 and then a 0 b 0 a 1 b 1 and so on right. So, suppose this is 32 bits. So, a b 31 a a 31 and then this is c 1 this is c 2 till this is c 31 and then there will be C 32 is the carry out and here you will get some 0, some 1, some 2 uh, and so on right. So, till S 31. So, this is how I will develop a ripple carry adder right. So, this is the design that uh, we have uh, seen effectively this is just a 4, four bit adder. We have also discussed the carry look at adder which is much faster as compared to this uh, ripple carry adder, but you can think about the discussion that we are going to do have it is applicable for both. So, what is uh, our objective? We want to develop an adder subtractor block right and if you recollect in week 2 we have discussed that in practice we do not need a separate subtractor block right. So, the adder is sufficient ok. So, uh, what we effectively do is in subtraction we when you try to uh, uh, subtract a number n from a number m, what we do? We take the two's complement of the number n, right? So what we do? We do m, and then we add that. We'll add. So we'll effectively use the adder uh, to do this. And what will be the resultant? If m greater than m, then this will be the additional carry. Right, that will be excluded and my m minus n result I will get. And if m is greater than m, then what will happen? I will effectively I will get 2 to the power n uh, minus n plus. So, what I can do? I can just do this n minus m, right. So, I will just do this way. What effectively means? It is means that I will keep the 2's complement of the result, right, because this n greater than m. So, I will get a uh, negative value and so I will again make a two's complement of that value right. So, this is how this whole computation happen. So, effectively what we understood that effectively I need to make a whenever I do the uh, subtraction I have to make a two's complement of the number and what is the two's complement of a number? We usually do this right. So, what we do this whatever the number is so suppose this is 1010 I will first make a one's complement which is 1 0 1 0 and then I will do an addition 1 right. So, then if you do addition 1 it will be um, 0 1 1 0 right. So, this is the 2's complement of this number. So, this is my 10 and this is minus 10 it will be stored like this ok. So, for first thing is I am doing a 1's complement here. So, how can I do this once complement effectively in hardware? It can be done by just doing a XOR right. So, if you do a XOR with 1 then you will get the complement. If you give A here you will always get A bar. Why? If you take the truth table of XOR suppose you are giving A B and this is A XOR B 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1. So, output is 1 1 here right. So, this is the XR table. Now, what I am saying here is whenever so I am fixing the value of uh, B to 1 right. So, effectively I am doing 
uh, that uh, these two cases right, these two cases because my I am fixing the value of b equal to 1 you can see the output so the 0 become 1 1 becomes 0 so this is complement right so effectively if I take this number and if I do a, an XOR with 1 1 1 1 or b twice with 1 I will get this value right and then I have to do the addition 1. So, now if I implement this into this design what I will do I will effectively put this XOR gate okay? and uh, I am basically doing A minus B here right. So, I will take uh, A I will connect directly to the full adder and for B you can see, see there is an XOR gate where I am connecting this B right I am connecting this B 1, B 2, B 3, B twice and that is also connected with this M. Right. So, this is my mode. Okay. So, m whenever m equal to 1 I am doing the subtraction and m equal to 0 I will add R. because if I have a, a full adder which I can use both for adder subtraction I have to instruct the hardware that you do addition now or you do subtraction now. Right. So, that I will control with that bit m. Okay. So, this whenever I give 1 here what will happen? this 1 will come here and effectively I will get the complement right b 3 bar here b 2 bar here then b 1 bar here and b 0 bar here and this same m I am giving as a carry 0. So, this is that addition 1 right. So, whatever the number I am doing here I am doing addition of 1 here. So, effectively I am adding a plus b 2 complement of b which is 2 to the power 4 minus p. Right. So, this is what I am doing here and this is subtraction. So, by just doing this uh, adding this one level of XOR gate and having a control signal m I can just make uh, subtract and uh, perform subtract subtraction using the same full adder right and you, you have to make sure that your uh, full adder is also doing the correct addition. So, now if you see here uh, if I put m equal to 0 if you go back to the table, so whenever b equal to 0, uh, it passes the a, right? This a is 0, b a output is also 0, a is 1, output is 1. So, if I uh, put m equal to 1 here, uh, m equal to 0 here, so effectively I will get b0, right? I will get b0, p1, b2, and b3, right? I will get the same value, it is not getting complemented and I will put uh, m equal to 0 here there means no carry. So, then I am effectively doing a plus p right. So, with this uh, one level of XOR gate and with the additional signal m I can do the addition subtraction using the same full adder. Okay. Just to recollect uh, uh, in hardware if you uh, have the sign number right. So, effectively we have the sign number and uh, we uh, we, uh, we and the sign number uh, is stored like this. So, you have the MSB which is for sign bit and rest of the bit is for the number right. So, if there are n bits, so the n minus 1 number of bit will be used to store the value and this is a sign bit right. Uh, so, and the range will be 2 to the power n minus 1 plus 1 uh, minus 2. 2 to the power n minus 1 right. So, this is how the range uh, which I can uh, sorry this is 2 to the power n minus 1 2 to the power n minus 1 this range I can store here ok. And if the value is uh, negative what I will do I will just put the sign b to 1 and I will keep the 2's complement of the value here right. And if the value is positive I will keep the sign b equal to 0 and I will keep the number as it is right. So, this is how I will store the sign number and in practice everything is mostly you have to consider sign bit element. Okay. So, now uh, the we have to and we have also discussed in uh, in our previous lecture in week 2 that uh, we can actually uh, uh, do this addition subtraction even for sign uh, sign number seamlessly we using the same full adder. So, that discussion I am not extending here if you are uh, I mean I request you to recollect that from that part. Uh, so, so it is not a problem even if I have a sign number, but one issue will arise if uh, the concept of overflow. 
So, let, our, let us now look into the overflow situation. Uh, uh, in the overflow means what? So, when you add two number of n digit, uh, the result will be n plus 1. Right? So, that means if the two number you are adding is very big, uh, the result may not be stored in n bits because your sum you are carrying in uh, n number of bits. Right? So, whenever you have uh, numbers are unsigned, that means there is no sign bit involved and if you are using n bits, so all n bits are used to store the number. Right? So, in this case, now, when you add these two number a and b of n bits, your result will be n plus 1 bits, right? This is your sum, and the way we develop the full adder, this sum is n bits, and this is your carry out, right? So, whenever there is a carry out equal to 1, we will say there are overflow, right? Uh, you think about an example when you have uh, say uh, 4 bits and your number is say 1010, zero, zero, which is 10 and say 1001 which is 9, if you add this 2 it is 19. Uh, so, 1101, right. So, 9 this is actually 19. So, to represent 19 you need 5 bits, but your sum is 4 bits. So, this is your carry out, okay. So, whenever there is a carry out either you consider this as the result of the uh, sum or you say this there is an overflow, okay. So, this is how for unsigned number there is no problem. But things change when you consider sign numbers. So, in the sign number as you remember that if you have given n bits, so n minus 1 bits will be used for to store the data, right. And the last bit the MSB will be used for sign, right. Now, if you think about even if there are two numbers which is of say positive number only, but you are stored in a sign bit representation. So, there will be 0 here. And if there is an overflow, uh, then what will happen? There will be carry to this bit, right? And your actual carry, because the way we do the addition, we do not uh, consider the sign bit separately. We will consider the entire number as n bit number, right? So, the carry will come in the uh, from the sum here, right? So, it will not reflect in the carry out. Right. So, the, from the carry out you will not able to make out whether there is an overflow or not. So, we need to study little bit uh, in detail how this overflow happen for sign number representation. Okay. So, that we will discuss with some examples and we conclude how we can uh, how we will identify there is an overflow. Right. Uh, so, let us for this purpose I will take uh, an example of say 5 bit representation. So, let me uh, assume that my number is uh, in 5 bits. So, I have uh, 4 bits for the data and there is a uh, 1 bit for the sign bit, right. In 4 bit uh, the number can be represented minus 16 to plus 15, right. So, that minus 0 uh, consider as uh, minus 16, okay. And whenever the value is uh, is uh, positive the sign bit will be 0 and whenever the uh, you store a negative number say minus 5, minus 10 and all, we will put the 2's complement of the number, right, 2's complement of, we will store the 2's complement of the number and I will put sign bit equal to 1 just to specify that this is a negative number, right. And as we discussed earlier that whenever uh, you add it does not matter whether the number is uh, positive or negative, you can just seamlessly add them, the result will be correct, okay. Now, let us see uh, various scenarios okay, in overflow. One thing you have to re uh, remember that when you add a positive number with a negative number, the result will be always smaller, right? It will not never create overflow, right? The overflow can only happen when you add two big uh, large positive number or two large negative number and then only there can be overflow. So, I will consider uh, all these examples of scenarios where overflow and uh, overflow is happening. Okay. So, let us take uh, the first example, say I am going to add say plus 5 and plus 12. So, result is 17, right? but 17 you can understand in 4 bit you cannot represent, right? because the maximum value you can store plus 15, but it is plus 17. So, there will be an overflow. Let us see how it will happen in uh, this uh, representation. So, 5 is uh, in 4 bit 0, 1, 0, 1, 
and sin bit is 0 I just wrote it separately but this is a uh, same number and 12 is 1 1 0 0 and this is also positive number so sin bit is 0. So, if you add here 1 0 1 1 0 there is a carry here 1 1 0 there is a carry here then this is 1 and there is a carry out 0 right. So, this is uh, the result. Now, if you see here uh, there is no carry out right as, I, as expected, but if you see here this is the number which is represent plus 17 right. So, the fact that 17 cannot be represented in 4 bits, so uh, it needs 17 bits. So, the result is correct this using fine bit, but since I consider this particular uh, the MSB as sign bit this actually tells that uh, this is a negative number and this is the two's complement value of a number which is negative right. So, this is not exactly 17 right. So, this is overflow, but important point to note it here that the carry that passes from uh, the data to the carry bit is 1 and from sign bit to the out is 0. So, they are uh, 1 and 0 right they are not the same. Let me now take uh, the negative minus 5 and minus 12 result will be minus 17. So, if I represent uh, minus 5 in 2's complement it is uh, 0 1 0 um, sorry 0 sorry. So, if I represent this minus 5 in 2's complement it is 1 0 1 1 right you can check and this this sign bit is 1 because this uh, this is negative number. Similarly, this 12 is uh, 0 1 0 0 right uh, and then this is a sign bit right. So, if, if just to cross check that if this uh, 1 0 1 is the 5 if you do a complement it will be 1 0 1 0 and then if you add it is 1 0 1 1 right. Similarly, 1 1 0 0 is 12 if you do 0 0 1 1 and then if you add 1 it will become it will become 0 and then 0 1 1 right. So, yeah so this is 0 sorry because you are adding. So, this is 4 right. So, uh, this uh, you can always identify. Uh, now, let me add this here right what is happening let us see. So, this is uh, 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 there is a carry 1 look at here the carry propagate here is 0 because there is no carry and then output carry is 1 right. So, what is this effectively if you consider this value uh, what is happening here is uh, if you consider this entire value this is actually the 2's complement of, of minus 17 let me see what is happening here. So, this uh, if I try to represent this minus 5 it is 2 to the power n minus 1 uh, minus uh, m right. So, uh, this is your m and this is n right. So, this is your minus 5 plus 2 to the power n minus 1 minus n this is your minus 12 right because this is the 2's complement presentation. So, if you do this what is happening here if you just add this is 2 to the power n minus m plus n right. So, effectively this value is kind of a 6 bit number which is 2's complement of 17. You can cross check that 17 is uh, 1 0 0 0 1 is 17 this is your uh, plus 17 right. If you do a 2's complement it is uh, 1 0 1 1 1 0 if you add 1 it is 1 0 1 1 1 1 right this is what I got it here. So, this effectively the correct results only thing is that since I have only 4 bit to store this minus 17 which is not possible. So, this is an overflow and how we can detect it I can note that there is from the data to uh, sign bit is carry is 0 from sign bit to outside carry is 0 right. So, this uh, these are the two scenarios where overflow happen and I identify this. Let us take uh, the third example where the numbers are small say you have say plus 5 and plus 3. So, this is plus 8 and that data will store uh, perfectly in the uh, 4 bits. So, this is 1 0 1 0 
sin bit is 0, this is 1, 1, 0, 0, this is 3 and this is the sin bit. If you add it, 1, 1, 0, there is a carry 1, 1, 1, 0, there is a carry 1, 1, 1, 0, uh, there is a carry 1, this is 1 and then there is no carry here 0, this is 0, there is a carry out 0. So, this is plus 8 because this uh, 4 bit is sufficient to 8, so I got the correct results. Important thing is to note that there is no carry from the data to sign bit and the carry to uh, the carry corresponding from the sign bit to outside is also 0, 0, which is different from the other two cases. Other two cases uh, when the overflow happen, it is 1, 0 or 0, 1, right? It is not 0, 0, okay? Let me take uh, the other example, say minus 5 and minus 3. So, the result will be minus 8. So, minus 5 is uh, as I mentioned 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 and minus 3 is uh, you can identify this is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So, if you add here, so 1, 1, 0, there is a carry, 1, 1, 0, there is a carry, uh, 1, 1, 0, there is a carry here, 1, 1, 0, 1, there is a carry here, 1, 1, 0, 1 and there is a carry 1 here also, right. So, what I found here is that this is effectively my minus 8, right, because this is a sign bit and this is minus 8, right. Uh, what is happening here if I uh, consider this, so minus 5 is 2 to the power n minus 1, where n is basically 5, right, minus m plus you are doing 2 to the power n minus 1 minus n. If I, so, what is happening here because there is a carry from the data to this. So, what is happening here it is 2 to the power n minus 1 plus 2 to the power n minus 1 minus m plus n. Right? So, this is nothing but 2's complement of of minus m plus n. Right? This is what is this and this 2 to the power 1 is carrying uh, going to this sign bit and since both the value is negative, uh, so that is uh, that particular carry going out, right. So, uh, so this is what is actually happening here and he can since there is no overflow the, the carry going to the sign bit and carry going from the sign bit both are 1 1. So, this is also different from the case here 0 1 or 1 0, right. So, I will take one more example where you have positive number and negative number say plus 5 minus 3. Okay. So, this is 1 0 1 0 sin bit is 0 and 3 is I have already written 1 1 0 1 sin bit is 1. Right? If I do addition 1 1 0 there is a carry this is 1 there is no carry 1 1 0 there is a carry here 1 1 0 uh, there is a carry here and 1 1 0 there is a carry here. So, again you will see that this result is plus 2 and this is plus 2 right and sin bit is 0. So, this is correct. So, what is happening here is basically your m is 5 uh, and then uh, the minus 3 is 2's complement. So, this is 2 to the power minus n minus n. Um, so, effectively what I am getting here is uh, this uh, m minus n which is a positive number plus 2 to the power n minus 1 which is basically the carry going to sign bit right and since one of the value is 1 so that carry is getting added with the sign and there is a carry over, uh, carry out but again important thing this is 1 1 right so what i am seeing here when there is no overflow it is the carry going to the sign bit and from the sign uh, going out of the sign bit is 0 0 or 1 1 or 1 1 whereas whenever there is overflow it is carry going from the data to sign is 1 and from the sign to outside is 0 or 0 and 1, right. So, this way I can identify where is the overflow and the actual carry out by it has no significance effectively, right, because, uh, 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 because the data overflow goes to sign and we have to make sure that the carry goes to sign versus what is going out from the sign bit that should make the decision, right. So, if I conclude here, so we uh, identify that whatever the carry goes from the this is my say if this is a 4 bit uh, this is my uh, data and the carry goes to the sign bit. So, this is my sign bit right this is my sign bit and the carry goes out the sign bit if they are different 0 1 or 1 0 then this is overflow right this implies overflow 
if it is 0 0 or 1 1 no overflow right. So, this is effectively nothing but uh, I need 1 in this cases in this cases I need 1 in this case I need 0. So, this is nothing but XOR right. So, I just put a XOR gate connect this C 3 and C 4 effectively if it is 16 bit you take the the last bit that is coming out for the data side to the uh, sign bit and the last carry out and this carry has no significance for sign numbers. And if this V equal to 1 there is overflow and if V equal to 0 there is no overflow right. Uh, and if it is unsigned number I do not need this I just need this carry out and that will effectively tell us whether there is an overflow or not ok. I hope uh, uh, this overflow situation is clear. So, this is the entire design which actually can do addition and subtraction. This add subtraction part I have already explained how this two's complement is done here with this XOR gates and then this is the plus 1 here and this is the complement. So, this uh, a two's complement thing is happening inside and this is the full adder right and this XOR is effectively identify the overflow for sign number ok. So, I hope this overall idea is clear of this uh, adder subtracted design with overflow. With this I conclude today's discussion. Thank you.